Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making a tuna noodle casserole. Okay, I have a lot of ingredients here because I'm not using canned condensed soup in this recipe. Um, most of the recipes that you find for tuna noodle casserole have the canned condensed soup in them. And half of these ingredients are replace that little can of soup. But anyway, let's go over everything. I have two cans of tuna that I've drained. These are just five ounce cans of tuna. I have a about half of a bell pepper I've chopped up really fine. I have a stick of celery that I chopped up fine. A small onion that I chopped up. I've got about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of minced garlic. And this is the garlic and water that you get in the spice aisle. It's a really convenient way to use garlic. Um, I also have a half a cup of breadcrumbs. And you can use anything for your breadcrumbs. Homemade breadcrumbs, crackers. This is actually seasoned croutons that I crushed up. I saw that tip somewhere and thought, what a great idea. I have a half a stick of butter. A cup of um, shredded cheddar cheese that we're going to top it with. I've got a cup of peas. These are just regular sweet peas, frozen peas. Two tablespoons of cornstarch. You can use a quarter of a cup of flour if you like. I've got some salt that I'm going to put in my water for my pasta. And I have eight ounces of egg noodles here. You don't have to put that salt in the water, but that helps keep your pasta from sticking together. Um, I've got two cups of milk, and any milk will work. It doesn't have to be anything special. And I have eight ounces of new potatoes that I have sliced up. Because Alex is allergic to um, mushrooms, I didn't want to use mushrooms in this. So if you have somebody with a mushroom food allergy, or you just don't like mushrooms, you can substitute potatoes. There are other things you can substitute too. But I just slice them up like you would do the mushrooms in this recipe. So either eight ounces of potatoes or eight ounces of mushrooms sliced up, whatever you want. And of course some salt and pepper to season it with. So let's get some of this stuff over to the stove and get started. I want to start with my butter and all of my onions and garlic and celery and peppers and all that stuff in my skillet. And I'm going to brown that stuff and cook it till it gets tender first. So just start by adding your butter to your pan. And then just start adding all your vegetables in there. Including your garlic. I've got the onions and the garlic and now the celery. I'm going to go ahead and add the potatoes. And if you were doing mushrooms, you would want to go ahead and put them in now. And the peppers. I am going to save my peas until this stuff starts to cook. And then I will add it when this stuff starts to cook a little bit. Okay. How much salt and pepper you add is really just kind of to taste. Um, I just sprinkle a little on my vegetables when I start cooking them. And then you can taste it after you get your noodles and your sauce and everything made and put in it. And if it tastes like a little more, or it tastes like it needs a little more, you can add a little more then. And you can always serve it with extra salt and pepper on the table too, so people can add salt and pepper when they eat it. Okay, now while our vegetables are cooking, we're going to go ahead and get the pasta going. And you just want to cook your pasta according to the package directions. And like I said, the salt helps keep it from sticking together. Um, I always add it to mine, but you don't necessarily have to. You do want to make sure, though, that your water is boiling before you put your pasta in it. Because if you add your pasta to cold water, it's going to make it really stick starchy and slimy um, and it's just not going to be good and once you add it you need to keep an eye on it because it will boil over really quick so you want to leave it on high 
full boil until it comes back to a full boil after you've added the pasta. Now we've got a few little bubbles here, but I want to let this water get boiling a little more rapidly. That just, it makes the pasta come out so much better. And mine say cook it for eight minutes. So I'm going to set the timer for eight minutes because overcooked pasta is not good in this. Okay, now my water's boiling again and I'm going to turn my pasta down to about medium heat. You want to stir it a few times um, to keep it from sticking together while it's cooking, but you don't need to go crazy with it. Now while this stuff is all cooking, I'm going to go ahead and add my cornstarch to my milk. And just give it a little stir to dissolve it. While this sits here, while these vegetables are cooking, the cornstarch is actually going to settle down in the bottom of the cup that the milk is in and it will all stick to the bottom of the cup. So right before we add it to our vegetables to make our sauce, we're going to give it another little stir. Okay, while your vegetables and your pasta are cooking, you want to um, butter your casserole dish. You can use non-stick cooking spray if you want to, but if you wipe a little butter in it, it adds a little bit to the flavor. So I always, when I'm making, especially this kind of casserole with the pasta in it, wipe the dish with butter. And just make sure you get the bottom and up the sides a little bit coated pretty good. It'll make it easier to clean your dish too. Go ahead and turn your oven on 350 and let it start preheating. Now, this is going to pretty much be cooked when you put it in the oven. And you don't even necessarily have to put it in a casserole dish and put it in the oven. If you're in a hurry, when you get it all cooked, you can add your breadcrumbs and stuff right in your pan, your breadcrumbs and your cheese, and just put a lid on it and let it sit there and melt. And you don't have to have the oven, especially if it's in the summertime. But you're going to bake this about... Mm, 25 or 30 minutes in that 350 degree oven just until your cheese and stuff gets nice and brown. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and add my peas and my tuna. You want to make sure this all just gets really hot. The potatoes and stuff, because they're so sliced so thin, they're not going to take very long to cook. And it is going to be in the oven for another 30 minutes. So anything that's still a little bit crunchy will be very tender by the time it comes out of the oven. Now, if you are make it in the summertime and you don't want to put it in the oven or you're in a real big hurry, you might want to cook your vegetables just a little bit longer and make sure they're all good and tender before you dump in um, your tuna. Okay, now this next step is kind of one of those things that separates home cooking from stuff that a chef would do. Um, a chef would probably get out a separate pan and prepare a white sauce. All I'm going to do is give my cornstarch another stir to make sure it's dissolved. And I'm going to add this to my vegetables and my tuna. And it's going to thicken up and make a perfect white sauce in the pan with the vegetables. No need for another pan and no need to stand there and stir two pans or wash two pans. And that's it. Basically, the peppers, the onions, the milk, the cornstarch, the celery, um, all that stuff was to replace that can of condensed soup. So that kind of gives you an idea how many additives are in a can of condensed soup if it takes all those ingredients just to replace the flavor from that. Okay, now you can test your pasta just literally by tasting a piece of it. And you don't want it crunchy, but you definitely don't want it overcooked if you're using it in a casserole. And that's pretty tender. So you just want to drain your pasta. And then add it. 
to the rest of the ingredients. Now, my sauce is not super thick yet, but it hasn't come to a boil yet um, after I added together all my ingredients. And if you want to cook this on the stove without putting it in the oven, you want to continue to cook it until that sauce starts to thicken up for sure. Because it's not going to thicken um, once you add, or I mean once you turn the stove eye off, unless you bring it to a boil first. But I'm going to go ahead and thicken mine a little bit before I put it in the oven because I'm not baking it for that long. And you do want to make sure you've got this mixed up pretty good. I mean, you don't want any big sections in your casserole where you have a lot of pasta and no peas and no tuna, just a big glop of pasta. And you don't want all your peas in one place either. You want them spread out all through your casserole. When you're um, thickening it up, and you start to hear that sizzle when you stir it that I'm getting now, that means it is boiling in the bottom and it's gonna thicken almost instantly after you start hearing that. Okay, now at this point, it is thick. And like I said, you can put your breadcrumbs and your cheese right in this skillet and just put a lid on it and let it sit there and melt if you want to, if you don't wanna heat up the house with the oven like you're making this in the summertime, or if you're just in a hurry and you don't have time to put it in the oven for 30 minutes, you can add the rest of the ingredients in the pan, just put a lid on it and let the cheese melt and it will be delicious like that. But we're gonna put this in the oven. So just dump it in your buttered casserole dish. Just spread it out even in your casserole dish and then add your breadcrumbs whatever kind of breadcrumbs you like. I like the croutons too because you, it's almost impossible to get them all crushed up super fine. So you get a few kind of bigger chunks in there. Of course you could do that with homemade breadcrumbs too or even crackers. But I like that extra added texture. If you really like a lot of cheese you could add um, I don't know, another half a cup or a cup of cheese in the sauce of the casserole too if you wanted to. I mean, if you want one of those casseroles where when you pick it up with your fork it just strings cheese everywhere, just add like another cup in the sauce. We're just going to slip it in the oven now. Now if you serve this up with just a little tossed salad maybe or some fresh cut up vegetables of some kind, that's all you need for a complete meal. It's perfect on a cold winter night and it's easy enough that you can do it on a weeknight, um, you know, when there's school and extra activities and stuff. This is also a good one to take to potlucks. And if you have people with food allergies, you can also substitute uh, chicken in this recipe for the tuna. So you can do potatoes for the mushrooms, uh, chicken for the tuna if you've got people with fish allergies. It's really kind of a versatile casserole and casseroles are so easy, they're so warm, they're so good and they're not really really expensive. Egg noodles for some reason um, like I used in this, they are, they tend to be a lot pricier than other pasta. If that's the case and you're on a budget and you want to do it a little cheaper, you could substitute like bow tie pasta or even some large seashell pasta in this. Kids love that anyway. And if you're doing tuna and you put the seashells in it, kids will like it even better. You guys might have noticed my t-shirt. This is our new logo. Uh, I have posted it on the internet and I have uploaded this design on Teespring and we should have, if we don't already, uh, at the bottom of all of our videos below the description, there should be a link to our Teespring store. Uh, several of you had asked about t-shirts and right now the logo is all I have. I have the logo on t-shirts, coffee cups, bags, um, some different things. You can visit the Teespring store. 
I did reduce the price on everything. Um, they had a pretty high markup on it. So I went ahead and just went all through the store and reduced the price on everything. So our stuff is considerably lower than other people who are selling on YouTube. We appreciate you guys and all the support that you have shown us. And like I said, I did this because several of you were asking about it. And I do appreciate you promoting the channel. And this is another way to promote the channel so that we get more viewers. Um, so that we can share the gospel with more viewers. I really appreciate all of you helping to promote the channel and share the channel and let people know about it. It's because of you that it has grown so much. Um, God has just blessed it so much and He has blessed us with each and every one of you. But if you want to look for the t-shirts and the coffee cups and stuff, they are, they should be in the description at the bottom of the page. Click on the link and when you go to the store, hit view all products because it doesn't pop up everything. You know, you can't find the coffee cups and stuff like that. So click on the link at the bottom of the description if you want something with the logo on it. And then click on view all products when you get to the store. I don't know why they make it so hard to use. They, It's not super easy to get the stuff on there and it's definitely not super easy to shop on there. But you can get these in any size, any color. Like I said, when you click on the link, go to the store and it'll give you all the options that way. If you're looking for something different for dinner, maybe you haven't had it in a while, give the tuna casserole a try. It's especially while it's still cold and you can warm the oven up and brown it and melt the cheese and everything. It's one of those things that will bring back memories from your childhood because I know we all had a mom or an aunt or grandma or somebody who made tuna noodle casserole when we were kids. Thank you so much for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen and for being a part of our channel. If you haven't already, please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And until next time, remember to put God first.